Okay, we are going to go ahead and go through this passage. Um, this was intended for the students who have oral administration or who have difficulty reading fifth grade text. I realize that some of you probably just don't want to read it, um, but we're going to go through and I'm going to be highlighting some of the vocabulary because all of the vocabulary is going to be asked about later on. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that you put your name on your paper. I'm going to label this one as the key because I'm gonna leave this one for the substitute. Um, but you're gonna make sure you wanna put your name on it and then we're gonna go ahead and get started on the passage. So the concept that we're working on this week is food chains and food webs, which is what I found a passage over. Uh, paragraph one, organisms on earth are connected. Even the sun is connected to the earth and organisms. These connections form food chains. A food chain is the path of energy from the sun to a producer, to an animal, to another animal. The organisms in a food chain rely on each other for food. The organisms are like links in a chain. Energy flows from one link to the next. Arrows in a food chain diagram point in the direction that energy flows. Okay, in this paragraph we had one vocabulary word. And that was the definition of a food chain. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that one. Paragraph two. There are many important parts in a food chain. Starting at the top is the sun. The sun provides energy for producers, which are plants and algae and some bacteria. Producers are organisms that make their own food. Producers capture energy from the sun in order to make their own food. A producer always makes up the first link in a food chain. So we're going to highlight the vocabulary word producers and we're going to get the definition that producers are organisms that make their own food and they're basically telling you producers are plants. Okay, we'll go to paragraph three. The opposite of a producer would be a consumer. A consumer makes up the rest of the links in a food chain. Consumers are animals that eat other organisms. When a consumer eats a producer, it gets the energy that the producer received from the sun. The first consumer in a food chain is called a primary consumer. So we're gonna highlight consumers are animals that eat other organisms. I'm having you highlight the vocabulary because later there's questions about all of the vocabulary words and that will help you get back to them quicker. All right, paragraph four. There are different types of consumers. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants. Examples of herbivores are rabbits, deer, and cows. In the pond food chain shown, the dragonfly is an herbivore. The dragonfly is also a primary consumer. The producer, cattails, gets energy from the sun. The dragonfly eats cattails to get energy. So I'm going to highlight herbivores are animals that eat only plants. And they're also referencing this diagram right here. So the sun is the primary energy source. It gives energy to producers, which in this case is a plant called cattails. And then our primary consumer, our herbivore, is the dragonfly, and he's going to eat the cattails. Notice that the energy is following from the sun into the plant and from the plant into the dragonfly, okay? So the arrows follow the energy. Paragraph five. Carnivores are animals that eat only other animals. The fish in the food chain diagram is a carnivore because it eats an animal, the dragonfly. Since the fish is the second consumer in the diagram, it is called a secondary consumer. So we have carnivores are animals that eat only other animals. All right, we're gonna go to the next page. Paragraph six. Decomposers are a different type of consumer. They are organisms that feed on dead plants and animals, as well as animal wastes. Bacteria and fungi, such as mushrooms, are decomposers. In the food chain diagram, when the fish and other organisms die, decomposers break down the dead material. They get energy from the dead material and provide nutrients for other organisms to use. So in paragraph six, we learned that decomposers um, are a different type of consumer and that they feed on dead plants and animals as well as animal wastes. 
paragraph seven. A consumer can either be predator or prey. Predators are animals that hunt other animals for food. The fish in the diagram is a predator. It hunts the dragonfly for food. Animals that are hunted by predators are called prey. The dragonfly is prey of the fish. Some bears hunt fish for food. The bear is a predator of the fish and the fish is the prey of the bear. Okay, so we have two vocabulary words here. Predators are the hunters and the animals that are hunted are called the prey. And when I used to teach third grade, one way that I used to teach them to remember this is that the prey animals better prey that they don't get caught uh, because they're gonna get eaten. So that helped them to kind of remember that those were the ones that were in danger. Paragraph eight. Some consumers eat both plants and animals. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals. Pigs, skunks, and raccoons are omnivores. Many bears are also omnivores. A grizzly bear will eat both fish and berries. So in this paragraph, we got the word omnivore, and they eat plants and animals. Paragraph nine. Omnivores are best shown in a food web diagram. A food web is a group of overlapping food chains. A food web is more complex than a food chain. A food web shows how an organism can get energy from more than one source. The food web below shows that the deer mouse is an omnivore. It eats both a plant and a caterpillar. So our new word is food web, and it's just a group of overlapping food chains. And they were talking about this little deer mouse right here, and the arrow from the red oak is going into the mouse, which means the mouse eats the red oak but the gypsy moth caterpillar is also going into the deer mouse. So with the food web, we can see animals that eat more than one thing, which most animals eat more than one thing. So the food webs are actually more accurate. Paragraph 10. Food chains and food webs show parts of an ecosystem. Some things can change a food chain or food web. Forest fires can have different effects. A forest fire can remove species of organisms. A forest fire often creates an environment for new growth. However, it can disrupt a food web by destroying a habitat. A fire in the forest food web shown could remove the red oak trees. As a result, caterpillars would lose a source of food. There would be fewer caterpillars. Carpenter ants would have less food because they eat caterpillars. Blue jays would have less food because they eat carpenter ants. Paragraph 11. When a species is abruptly moved from its spot on a food chain, then another organism must take its place. Other species may begin to die out as they lose their main source to, uh, sorry, main food source to another animal, or they become a main food source for another animal. Paragraph 12. An example of this would be frogs in a pond. Frogs are both prey and predator in the pond. If they are removed, then the animals that they eat, such as insects, could begin to overpopulate the pond. Plus, the animals that eat the frogs, such as fish, may begin to die out because of a lack of food. When this happens, the food chain changes. Okay, now we're going to look at the content questions. These questions are directly stated in the passage. So you should be able to go back into the passage and find the answers to these questions. Um, if you need to pause between questions so you can go back and look for the answer, then feel free to do that. I'm just going to read through the six questions that are on this page. Question one, a consumer that eats only plants is called A, an herbivore, B, an omnivore, C, a carnivore, D, a decomposer. Number two, look at the food chain below. Which answer lists an organism that is a predator in the food chain? A, a producer. B, decomposers. C, a mouse. D, a snake. Number three, the first link in a food chain is always A, a predator. B, a producer. C, an omnivore. D, an herbivore. Remember to go back into the story to find these answers. They are directly stated. Number four, 
What type of consumer hunts other animals for food? A, a decomposer, B, an herbivore, C, prey, or D, a predator? Number five, look at the food web below. According to the diagram, which predator does not get energy from the salmon? Okay, your salmon is right here. A salmon is a fish. I know it looks like salmon, but it's not, it's salmon. Okay, and if you follow that line up, then you have arrows pointing into animals. The question is which predator does not get energy directly from the salmon? A, the wolf, B, the lynx, C, the bear, or D, the cougar? Number six, which is not a type of decomposer? A, bacteria, B, an insect, C, a mushroom, or D, a fungi? Uh, fungi is just plural of fungus. So you're gonna go back to paragraph six to find that answer because paragraph six is the one about decomposers. Okay, next we have content practice that's fill in the blank. These sentences are in the story. So you have to go back and find the sentence to find the word that's missing to fill in the blank. Number one, blank are animals that eat only other animals. It's a vocab word. Number two, herbivores are animals that eat only blank. Again, go find the herbivore vocab word. Number three, blank eat both plants and animals. Use your vocabulary. Number four, an organism that makes its own food is called a blank. Number five, the organisms in a food chain are like blank in a chain. So I would go back to the paragraph about food chains to find that sentence. Number six, a food web is a group of blank food chains. I would go back to the paragraph about food webs to find that answer. Remember, if I'm going too fast, you can pause the video between each question and go find what you need or replay where I read it if you didn't catch it. Number seven, a blank is always the first link in a food chain. So it's about food chains. Go back to the paragraph about food chains. And number eight, the first consumer in a food chain is called a blank consumer. Okay, this page is straight up vocabulary practice. Here are all of the vocabulary words that we highlighted in the story. Here are all of the definitions. You're going to read the word, find the correct definition that goes with it, which you highlighted, and then put the letter that matches next to it. These are the vocabulary definitions again, except they don't have the words. Use the words that you highlighted that match these definitions and just write the word on the line. Again, all of the answers are going to be vocabulary words that go in this passage that we highlighted when I was working it with you. This last page, these questions are not in the story. You actually have to use the food web on the page and your brain to think and answer questions one through four. We have this very large food web. It's obviously in the water because we have um, the fish and the whales and the penguins and the seals and things like that. Um, and so we're gonna look at the questions. Remember the arrows always follow the energy and you can, it's gonna go back and use those same vocab words that we've already done. Question one, which organism is a predator of the leopard seal? So find the leopard seal, find its predator. An elephant seal, a penguin, a smaller toothed whale, or the baleen whales? Number two, which organism gets energy from the sun to make its own food? A, the krill, 
B, the phytoplankton, C, the elephant seal, D, the sperm whale. Number three, which organism is not prey of the penguins? A, the crow, B, the fish, C, the herbivorous zooplankton, D, the leopard seal. And four, the baleen whale gets energy from A, the krill, B, the fish, C, the seals, or D, the smaller toothed whales.